So today we're going to talk about what men are ridiculously attracted to. And when women have these three habits, they have a greater chance for success of attracting, let's call it that high quality man. Now, before I jump in, I want to actually read to you from my blog this morning from Instagram to illustrate a point. And the blog goes like this. My mother was born almost 100 years ago. Kind of hard to believe that now. 100 years ago. And at age 16, she met my father once at an officer's ball. This is during World War II period of time. And she said at that ball, she goes, that is my future husband. Several years, oh, and she was age 16 at the time. Well, seven years later, they bumped into each other again and were married shortly thereafter. She dated only one man in her entire life, and she was married for 66 years before she passed away. And stories like these romanticize the process because dating today is vastly different. And I often wonder if every person you ever date, so if you went out on a one-hour date, you went out on a five-hour date, every single date was actually considered a relationship. Just play with me for a moment that every date you ever went on was a relationship. Most people then... Um, Oh, let me just, if every person you dated even just once was a relationship, then most people in the dating process are experiencing many, many, many relationships, unlike my mother. Is there a grander design happening in human development? My belief that dating today is a new phase in human evolution, allowing one to truly explore their inner world and become more evolved from an emotional perspective. What if every romantic encounter or interaction is an opportunity to peel the layers of imprinting and trauma that block us from truly being in our sovereignty? Okay, so I just said a mouthful there, but this is going to so relate to what I'm about to share with you, so stick with me. But let's face it, if you've been watching my channel, you know I say we are swimming in a sea of emotional dysfunctionality regarding human pair bonding. From avoidant attachment style to anxious attachment style to choosing bad boys to choosing someone like your emotionally unavailable parent to those spenders and those users and narcissists and childhood wounds and adult traumas like divorce, we are, we are in a landmine of a variety of different circumstances. And what I've observed actually as a coach that nearly majority of my clients have had at least five significant relationships in their life that lasted more than three months. Okay. So when I, let me reframe the word significant. Let me rewind that. They've had five relationships in their lives that have lasted more than three months. That's the average client I speak to. See, unlike my mother had one person her entire life, we, many of us, are experiencing multiple, multiple relationships. And I believe because of that, there's a grander picture going on. I believe from a human evolution perspective, the days of what my mother experienced is, go is gonna be far in the past. I believe we are actually experiencing a variety of different relationships or encounters with people so we can learn more about ourselves. In fact, the meme that I posted with that Instagram post said the following, what if every failed relationship was preparing one for the most important relationship in one's life, the relationship with oneself, looking in the mirror? What if that is the grander picture happening right now? in human development, whether you are a believer of God, universe, spirit, what if that is actually happening? So what, what's the benefit of knowing all this? Well, the benefit is, particularly for those of you who do introspective work, who do personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, number one, the, mo the fundamental, okay, how do I say this? The people who are more likely to achieve what I call a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship are people that know themselves. They really know who they are at a very introspective level. They know what triggers them. They know what turns them on. They know what who they are. They know their deal breakers. They have a real great sense of comp understanding compatibility. 
And these are the many factors, especially, and they've studied human behavior. They studied thing, the books like uh, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. They've studied, and by the way, all the books I recommend are listed below. They've read the book Getting the Love You Want by Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt to know why you might choose someone like who's like your father or like your mother. I have a pattern of choosing women who are like my mother. They've even read my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Why I'm recommending, why I'm suggesting this is the more we understand human behavior, the more we understand patterns, our own patterns first, but the patterns of others, we have a greater chance of choosing people that are more aligned with us, that are more apt to actually go the distance if you're one of those people seeking to go the distance. You know, I worked with a woman um, not too long ago. She had what's known as an anxious attachment style, and she had a pattern of choosing men who were at avoidant attachment style. And those avoidant men, those men who were emotionally constipated, emotionally unavailable, from the very early stages, they come on strong and then they just start to breadcrumb afterwards. Have you ever experienced a man that came on strong and then breadcrumbed? Yeah. Do you realize that you can actually predict this happening sooner rather than later if you ask the right questions? In fact, my entire coaching program, if you need, some, right here's a link to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you, is designed to uncover those people who are emotionally grown up and emotionally mature versus those who are emotionally constipated. So what is the first habit or technique, if you will, to being ridiculously attractive to that quality man? Because we're going to differentiate those men, uh, those quality men in just a moment. I think one of the most important fundamental habits is the is the embracing of self-love. And as I said in my book, self-love is a journey of personal development, self-help and spiritual work. It's about knowing thyself. It's about being in your sovereignty. We all have childhood wounds and adult traumas. We all do. And by the way, childhood wounds doesn't have to be something radically significant that happened in childhood. It could even be something benign that makes, you have to recognize, Everything our parents taught us, every single day of our life, we as children were absorbing things at a granular level. And we have, we have forgotten 90% or more of our childhood experiences. So we may not be even aware that we have a wound or an experience from childhood. And we oftentimes associate childhood wounds with physical abuse, emotional, like severe physical and emotional abuse. And by the way, you could have had loving parents and they could have traumatized you unbeknownst to you. And it's not that it's repressed. It's just, we don't have the capacity to remember every single minute of our lives. I mean, can you honestly say you can remember every single second you've ever had in your life? No. Most people have a hard time remembering what they did yesterday, let alone five minutes ago. <laughs> So recognizing that when we do therapy, when we do personal development, self-help and spiritual work, we begin a practice of healing and that's what self-love is about. And why is that so ridiculously attractive to a man? Because a woman in her sovereignty is a beautiful thing. A woman who is in her power is incredibly attractive. And I don't mean masculine energy. But Jonathan, I'm just supposed to sit my feminine energy and just let men lead. No, that's not what it's about. Being in your sovereignty has nothing to do with femininity or masculinity. It is just being in your divinity when you are in your power. In fact, many of you might be wondering, what is a high quality man or woman? I believe it's people with solid character in their life. In other words, their actions consistently match their words. They've healed from their past experiences. They are generous and kind. See, sadly, most human beings these days are in a self-centric bubble. And while they might be at times generous and kind, 
but they're in such a self-centric bubble that they have difficulty being consistently generous and kind. You know, I believe a person of character communicates clearly without wanting to be right. So in other words, when there's friction, when there's a disagreement with somebody that you're in relationship is you don't have to operate from being right. I can communicate clearly what is going on with me and certainly hold space that what is true for you is your truth. I can't unvalidate your truth. I'm sure you've heard the term gaslighting. This is convincing someone's not wrong. No, when you are when you can clearly communicate where you're at without having to be right, without having to make the other person wrong, that's a sign of character. By the way, people of character, they believe demonstrating trust is a paramount in their life, that demonstrating trust. And trust in relationship isn't just about fidelity. Trust is this person I'm with, their, what's in their best interest is in my best interest. That is how you develop trust with another person, by not putting someone up on a pedestal, not putting someone up above you, putting them on the same level of you. you their feelings matter. My feelings matter. Their feelings matter commensurately. Is that the right word, commensurately? I didn't want to say equally. Here's the thing about people of character. People of character who are in the dating marketplace know the importance that their actions have consequences. So they don't use people. They are very clear about seeking commitment. And while we could date someone for six weeks, eight weeks, even three months, and it not work out, they're very clear about commitment, and you're in that probationary period. But people that are not clear about commitment, let's take it slow. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's just take it slow. I don't want to put a label on it. Let's just be casual. Those are the ones that end up that's those are the experiences where you might feel you might end up feeling used because people of character are very crystal clear about commitment but being in integrity with their words being in integrity with their words this is so so critically important how many times has a guy said to you i want a relationship i want a relationship i want a relationship he sleeps with you and all of a sudden i don't want a relationship well then, then why, why weren't you clear about that ahead of time? Now, you could simply say, I don't want a relationship with you. And I recognize that a lot of times we say, I don't want a relationship with, want a relationship because it's really, I don't want a relationship with you. Then, then be honest, be clear about that with someone because it rather hurts to say one thing and then go be inconsistent. Now, people of character, they have their act together. They have their act together. You know, their life, their life isn't in chaos. Now, that's not to say that there could be moments of chaos, okay? But for the most part, the people of character, the ground underneath them, for the most part, is solid, okay? And I'm using the term character. We're using the term high quality. We're using high value in this. And just merely, these are attributes and traits for people that are more intentional in the dating process than the average person these days. Now, I think one aspect of people of character, and again, this is men and women alike, they are introspective. They work on themselves. They grow beyond their limitations. They grow beyond their limitations. And most importantly, they are empathetic. In other words, they, they operate from a place of not only I can feel your feelings, but your feelings matter. And so do my feelings matter. In other words, you they operate from a place of empathy for themselves and for other human beings. So one of the unique traits, habits, uh, techniques that, um, that high quality men and women use when it comes to attracting another person is discernment. That's number two. The second habit is discernment. What discernment means is you're actually vetting a person early on in the dating process to determine if there's alignment for one another. 
They want to, they, 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 they're unafraid to have the hard conversations. High quality men are attracted to women who have a capacity to have the more difficult, intimate conversations. But Jonathan, I am told to be in my submissive state of being. I have to submit to man. I shouldn't make it difficult for him. Of course, when you're with broken men, when you're with low vibrational men, when you are with arrogant men, when you are with um, ridiculously alpha personalities, they don't want you to be a high quality person. They don't want you to love yourself. They don't want you to be discerning. They want slaves, basically. They want people to do their bidding. I'm sorry, I'm being blunt when I say this, but that's what they want. They want people to operate at their beck and call because they're incapable of actually being a partner to another human being. And when you learn discernment, and you're with a high quality man of character, he's going to appreciate you much more because you're both most likely on the same wavelength. Because guess what? He's vetting you as well. He's vetting you as well. It's a two lane street here. I want you to understand this. And this is what's ridiculously attractive to that high quality, high value man of character. And the third habit and technique is discipline, the discipline. In other words, you've heard the phrase doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. What discipline represents in this conversation is the ability to recognize a red flag and sticking to being more curious about a red flag. It's about sticking to a deal breaker within your life. See, here's the challenge for many of us, and I'm guilty of this, folks. We take a red flag and paint it green. We overlook things because we're getting something over here and we overlook some major things over here. I believe what's ridiculously attractive is when we can hold to our power, we hold to our sovereignty. And when we do that, we become incredibly attractive to both genders or um, from a heterosexual perspective. You know, Discipline doesn't care how we feel. And discipline isn't meant to be absolute willpower. Discipline is about standing in your power, particularly when you have a habit of giving your power away. And discipline is staying in your sovereignty and your power. And let me just say this. Discipline in your mindset, particularly when it comes to, when it comes to, the recognition that yes, we are swimming in a minefield of dysfunctionality out there. And yet everybody has the possibility to be the exception and not the rule. And what I mean to say is the rule of thumb is, yeah, a lot of people who are single right now over 50, they're not gonna have a relationship. That's the rule of thumb. But everybody has the potential when you hold that space of doing that self-love work, to doing discernment, to doing the inner work, to being in your sovereignty. You have the potential of attracting an amazing partner in your life. I want you to hold that space, hold that vision, because hope is a wonderful thing. And when we give up on hope, we find ourselves swimming in the sea of everyone else when we've given up hope. And I'm here to encourage everyone to hold that vision, to hold that power that it is absolutely within your grasp, grasp to attract a healthy, happy relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear what you have to say. As always, if you find, if you find value in what I share, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, right below are links to schedule a discovery call with me to check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to follow me on Instagram, to get the books I recommend. And also my dating vows are listed below.